Shira has him cutting. Beautiful ball, slipped it through that back line. Mirza scores! We're gonna see the onslaught by the Bears. They're gonna push everybody forward. Garrett into the middle, saved by Walensky. There was no, up, there right? was no block. Ball oh, blocks, and it's headed in by Diaz. What? Bulldogs take the lead. To the area from here, runs up, takes the swing at it. It's right at the penalty position. Teixeira is there for a goal. <laughs> Welcome to Bedford High School here in Bedford, New Hampshire as we have Division I boys quarterfinal action. State championship tournament is beginning here for the Bulldogs. Of course, they were able to earn a bye with their undefeated regular season at 14-0-2. We're excited to bring you today's contest between the Bulldogs and the visiting Pinkerton Academy Astros. I'm Corey Munster-Tiger, joined in the booth by Bill Klein. We're excited to bring you today's quarterfinal game. Bill, thoughts on today's action coming up momentarily? A combination of things. This is a beautiful day for soccer. Amazing, although it's about 20 degrees cooler right now than it was at the start of the game last night. Pinkerton beat the Bedford side last night in penalty kicks, one of three of the top four teams to go down in girls' soccer in the quarterfinal round, unfortunately, for Bedford. But here this morning, it's a gorgeous day, and uh, we got 14-0-2 Bedford, number one, with the only team that got the bye, Pinkerton number eight, eight, four, and four, regular season. That was played back a month ago, and it was a five to nothing score, Corey. I just talked to both coaches briefly. Kerry Bowles, I've known since he played high school soccer, and he is up and excited about having a rematch, especially the way other things have gone, like yesterday. Carry on with that. So it should be a really interesting game. One note is that Bedford will be down one of their key players, possibly the leader in assists, Gabe Teixeira. Sprained his ankle late in the practice yesterday, unfortunately. But certainly, this is going to be a good game. And I think like yesterday, where the girls, Pinkerton had uh, top Bedford regular season 2-1. to one. It's going to be a tough game for Pinkerton. However, I expect a much closer game than that. I would think so, as these teams are approaching here, this playoff game. Of course, their emotions run high. Excitement runs high. We have introductions going on on the field right now. Flag is gently waving off to our right. You can see here the tournament bracket as Bedford, the number one seed, the only team that earned the bye. Pickerton, of course, winning over Nashua South to get to this point here today. Hanover and Merrimack will meet, meet. as you see. Hanover beat Salem 2-0, and Merrimack passed over Wyndham 3-1. On the other side of the bracket, Exeter was able to get by Timberlane 3-0 in that 2-15 matchup. Portsmouth advanced over Goffstown 4-3, high-scoring affair there. Nashua North advanced over Londonderry 3-2. That was a huge surprise to me, 14 over a three seed. And Londonderry, honestly, was expected to go deep in this tournament. And then Keene over Manchester Central 4-1. So that's the lineup. A couple of upsets, but we'll take a break here for the National Anthem and join you on the other side for boys' soccer action.
quick fact for you here, the uh, Corey, I don't know if you're aware of this, you probably are, that Pinkerton's the largest high school in the state of New Hampshire, virtually twice the student population of Bedford. Pretty amazing. But on the other side of that, two of the top teams in sports across the state in Division One are the smallest two. Bishop Girton and Hanover. So it doesn't necessarily matter the population, but they certainly have a bigger draw to get these players from. However, five to nothing earlier, what's gonna happen today? Five to zero, as you referenced, that was back on October 3rd. The Bulldogs victorious, of course, as they were unblemished throughout the regular season, 14-0-2. Phenomenal regular season for the Bulldogs. They are looking to go back to back as they were state champions last year as they ran through the playoffs. That was a little unexpected last year as they had a strong team, but uh, I, I'm not sure anybody would have picked them to be state champions at the end of 2023. This year has been a bit different. They have been dominant throughout the regular season. High scoring affairs, as you mentioned, that Pinkerton matchup was one of them. They've had a couple of eight and nine goal games as well. So a potent offense. But as you mentioned, they are missing one of their key offensive players in Gabe Teixeira tonight. It'll be interesting to see if that affects uh, who ends up scoring the goals because uh, he and Ali and uh, a couple of the other players, but mainly he and Ali have been a big connection where Ali's leading scorer by far. And... Uh, a lot of those assists came from the effort last touch rate before that. It would be nice for them to get more than one assist on some of these goals, too, because it's a huge team effort. Both ends of the field are very strong, both defensively and offensively. Very few goals scored. You know, the number of goals that Bedford's had, only five scored against them, which is incredible. Uh, Pinkerton 17 versus, are you ready for this, folks? If you don't know this, this is remarkable. Goals four. Bedford scored 74 total goals with 12 shutouts. That's twice the number of those numbers for P Pinkerton. Although Pinkerton is, is a very good team, and like I said last night, always very well coached. Pinkerton teams come out. Volleyball's playing today again. A lot of good programs, Kerry. Well, we woke him in our viewers on BCTV today, 1072. We also have Dairy TV Channel 22 tuning in today to bring you action for these Pinkerton Astros. As we were saying, Gabe Teixeira, a key member of the Bulldogs out. Matias Jacobson will get the start in his place, number 17, the sophomore midfielder. We're just about ready to kick off here and get things started. 40 minutes on the board, and we are underway. Pinkerton with the opening kick, sails it. Deep to that right wing. Try to probe back there on that back line. Corey, can you tell who potentially is replacing Gabe as a starter? I meant to look at that before. Yeah, I just mentioned that actually. I'm Sophomore sorry, midfielder Matthias Jacobson, number 17, will be in the starting lineup in place of Teixeira. Little pinball action going on here as both teams are going to probe early on see what they can do to establish some possession and flow of the game. When I went across right before the game to uh, say hi to my old friend, the, the coach, Kerry Bowles, and also uh, Stu Peppers, of course, noticed as I walked across the field the size of the Pinkerton players, the bulk. They, I would say, average 10 to 20 pounds more and an inch or two taller than our average players. Very athletic-looking group of boys. Gotcha. Oh, here we go. Look at this. Mirza getting in early, challenged by good. Aiden Brolt. Good no, no call on that. And by the way, the two officials are good. I Where hope so. Two? <laughs> you have. I know, I know these guys. The official on the near side a little better than the other one, but I think we're going to see a well officiated game. These guys are in shape, which is something that we have not seen a lot of this season. No offense to the. The other officials, we need good officials. We need officials that can run with these athletes, keep up with them. Your side, defender Ethan Fronseca. And the backing cleared out. Jack Welch, I believe. Kerry Bowles actually Excuse said to me, me Corey, he, uh, Kerry said, hey, speaking of officials, why don't you get back out in the field again? We could use you which is a nice compliment from a player and coach that I've been involved in probably, you know, 25, 30 of his games. Bulldogs probing that left wing. That is a nice compliment. 
Or at least I'm going to take it that way. Yeah. Well, maybe a couple years into retirement, but <laughs> not a that. bad way to do it. Johnson here on the far sideline for the Bulldogs. Looking to probe, avoids the slide tackle. I don't know if the viewers could just notice that, but the Pinkerton players were ready to step up and cause an offside. It's one of the first times that I've been able to actually notice that strategy being used. This time they did not, and this is a great. Long ball by Kaplow, looking down that far left wing. Balecki trying to run onto it, but couldn't quite gain possession. It's cleared out by the Pinkerton defender. Braden Wheeler back there that was coming over. That was nice to see, Corey. This you know, three minutes into, into the game and a nice attack like that that worked with the type of passing that we know. Here we go again. Nice ball into the penalty area. Mirza tries the middle for Santerra, but can't quite get there. And now Welch on that far sideline for the Astros. Balecki goes out of bounds and earns a throw for the Bulldogs, and he's in into it quick. Mirza can't quite get onto it. Santerra was right there, but cleared out by the Astros defense. Tipped back here by Wallace. Great hustle by Mr. Wallace. Now Benjamin. Challenged there by Oliveira. Kaplow stepping up from that center back position. Looking for Mirza deep, but then cleared out by Wheeler. Dangerous ball here right outside the penalty area. Nice challenge there. Is that Wallace? Fonseca and Wallace. Challenging for that ball. Tennant steps up now. Pokes it ahead. Somewhat unusual with the ball being in the air this long. Usually the coaches want that down on the ground quickly. However, defensively, when you're clearing it out of the back, you actually want it up in the air more than on the ground. And we just had that uh, volleyball game in the air, like you just pointed out. Tennant to Kaplow. Benjamin now. Bulldogs have changed their formation, too. They were going with a four across the back a lot early season. They've switched to a three back with Kaplow in the middle, Tennant on that left back. Nice pass. And Hoey on the right back. Wallace trying a little one-two with Mirza. Gets intercepted. That's Wheeler. And now Kaplow returns the favor. Scoots ahead, and he'll continue his run. Tackled nicely there. That was Bellows, but quickly back for the Bulldogs. Bellows tries that slide again, but can't quite get it. Crafty pass there as they find Benjamin across the middle. Wallace looks to go one-on-one. -on -one. Love the way they spread the field there, and then it opens up that play right there for the pass. Colin Johnson on that far sideline. Into the middle, through ball, Mirza's on it, right in the middle. Great save. Oh, oh good Outstanding play. Outstanding save there by the keeper. Ralston Ladd, right There's on the doorstep. That replay here, Corey. Phenomenal we'll job. It. Through ball there, Mirza gets onto it, strong left foot, just tries to pop it in, and Ladd gets two hands on it, deflects it high. Outstanding play on both sides there. And the Bulldogs have earned a corner kick. It's going to be near side down to our right. Corey, last night I uh, kind of had a bet with Lauren offside that the uh, offline or something like that, that uh, if it was going to be a one goal game, it was going to be a, uh, a corner kick goal to win it. And uh, what they've just done is what they should have done last night is the goalkeeper was dressed in black. And the officials last night did not see that. I noticed it halfway through the first period when we had a corner kick. And it's that time when you see all these players together, you can't see who the goalkeeper is versus offensive. Here we go. Johnson into the, into the box, headed away cleanly. I believe that was Bellows that got the head, head on it. A hustle Get there. Get a foul oh there. Gosh. Great hustle, though. The Astros earn a free kick. Down to our right, it looks like Fonseca will take it. And a good call. Swings through that left foot, crosses the formation. This is Aiden Brolt. Touched just too strongly and off that far side touchline. Santer and Balecki will play with it on that far sideline. And now Tennant clears into the middle. 
can't find a teammate. Wheeler heads it forward. Here's Marshall. Back for Shea. Forward, his pass gets intercepted, and now Shea gets into trouble. Cleared out on that far sideline. I believe that was Oliveira. No, excuse me, that was Miles Shea. Tough to see the numbers from where we are, so we'll we'll do our best with players and numbers. Yeah, I was wondering what a difference it was going to be today versus after last night when Laura and I both were suffering from a lack of distance vision here. Totally. <laughs> we had a really hard time. Making a run down that far sideline is Welch. Challenging Tennant. Nice ball into the middle, and Hoey steps up from his right back position and clears it out of danger. The Astros pressing forward there. Tias Jacobson challenging there. Officials obviously letting play go here. They're letting the players make the decisions on how this game's going to be played. You like to see that, it's though. It's nice. I love it. It's great. Physical play is okay. This is a physical sport. Yeah, there should be a whistle there, and there one, is. That one gets called. Yeah. Good job by the official. A little delay there, Good too. Good position. Possibly a warning, but nothing. <laughs> Bedford got it back and played pretty quick anyway. Now played deep. Kaplow will take his time and survey. Up the middle, Jacobson. Tennant. Back to Jacobson. Nice turn there with nobody on him. Balecki. Short passing game here. Takes a little space into the middle. Chips ahead for Mirza. A little bit high and hard. Benjamin. Mirza was trying to settle that with his chest, bring it down to his own feet. He's done that very well consistently through the season. On, that serve right to his chest. He loves it there. Benjamin can't keep it in on that far sideline, so the Astros will throw it in. Just about 10 minutes into this game, 0-0 is your score in the state quarterfinal as Bedford hosts Pinkerton. Kaplow will send that to the inside scoop. I'm going to pop my trivia question. It's the same one I've done years past. Oh, boy. Who won the first state championship for the boys in the large division schools? I'll give you the year. It was 1957. Who was the state championship? First recorded state championship. Well... I'm going to go with one of the teams here, and Bedford didn't exist at the time, so Pinkerton? <laughs> no. No. Oh, it's Manchester no. Central? It will come as a surprise. Oh, okay. Although it is still a large division school, unlike some of the other ones that have moved around. Goffstown. Oh, okay. Good for them. Their only championship. And one of, I think, only two appearances in the tournament. Considering it was about 20 years before I was alive, <laughs> uh, yeah, you got me on that one. Nice takeaway there by the Pinkerton player. Served forward. That was Oliveira into the oh. middle now. Not a bad chance there. Marshall was looking into the middle. Couldn't find Welch coming down that far side. Oh, excuse me, that was Phoenix Bolio. Great play by the uh, Bedford defender who cleared it instead of for the corner forced the throw in. Here's a long throw. Yeah, first one we've seen this oh season. My we gosh. talked about that last uh, last <laughs> regular season game. Right? Yeah, that's the first time. Good for them. Utilizing it similar to a corner kick. I think that was Ethan Fonseca that had that big throw for the Astros. Another big one here. Tenant nicely shields. Santerra, little flick. That was close to either an obstruction or a charge from behind. The referee was right there, let it go. Bilecki lets it go, looking for Wallace, right wing. Cleared nicely by Fonseca, and now we're on that far sideline. Through the middle, Hoey will track that one down. Bedford certainly would like to, after the way they've been playing, is to get one up on the board after the 5 nothing victory in the regular season. Mirza defended well by Wheeler. Got high and got ahead on it. Good touch back here for Oliveira. He takes his time. Finds Paquin. Good hustle. Nice pass. 
disrupted, and now Benjamin comes out of a pack, looks for Johnson. He's going to get it. He's he going to sure keep it is. in. is. Great hustle there by CJ. Takes the one-on-one. -on -one. Into the yes. middle, but earns a corner. Nice play. Deflected out of the way by Wheeler as he was getting back on D. And Johnson will have his second corner from this near right side. Great cut and moving to that direction. And the ball on the line there increases the probability of getting that corner, which, as we've discussed, high gore goal scoring opportunities. Bulldogs move some of their taller players forward. Low liner here for Benjamin. Makes a turn into the middle. Cleared away by the Astros. Fortunately, nobody there that time. I believe that was Wheeler again. Could have been a charge in that if you saw that. Pretty good shoulder to shoulder, though. So, And the angle that the lead official here to my right, your right on TV, since we're not on radio, we don't have to tell you that. Like Lauren Fox is famous for. <laughs> <laughs> He loves that radio dial. Oh Does anybody gosh. have a radio dial anymore? I think we had a dial on our TVs when I was young, didn't we? <laughs> it was yeah, sure you, you did. Tur to turn the dial. Oh, that's a foul. I oh, think we that, shielded that it out. Called. Oh, oh, and you got a corner off of that. And then the Bedford players are upset, and I can't disagree with them. Wow. Tough challenge there. Hoey plays it out, shields it out, and they rule that Hoey touched it. So the Astros earn a corner down to our left. And that, that could have been called by either the trail or the lead official on that, where that ball was. It's a tough, tough call to make either way, but here we go. Bellows nice. serves it in. Nice. Caplow gets ahead on it. Now Johnson runs onto it. Mirza at midfield. One on one. He'll challenge and get run oh. off. Nicely defended there. Again, that was Wheeler, senior defender, shoulder to shoulder and getting Mirza off the ball. There's no question that uh, all the Bedford opponents are going to be marking Ali Mirza very closely and situations like that be ready for, a, you know, two, two players on him. He's so, so effective. He sure is. Always in the right place at the right time and seemingly frequently finds the back of the net. Served forward, trying to find Mirza. Nice touch into the middle for Johnson. And now Mirza back onto it. Two on five here. Johnson serves it wide. Wallace takes a touch, tries to cut it oh. back near side and saved. Glad. You'll see this. The ball was headed for the lower right hand corner of the net. It was going in. Goalkeeper made an excellent save. The force. Forced the corner. He couldn't hold on to it with his hands, though. It was hit so well, so hard. And I honestly think that that was the best place for him to have put the ball at that point with the passing. You don't want more passes than that in there. Johnson with the nice ball out to that right side for Wallace, too. And now he takes the corner. Low liner. It's, gets through the oh. middle. Wow. Right through the throat of the goal. Nobody there to corner. tap it in. Did touch a uh, Pinkerton player, Corey. It did, it but I believe that's going to be a throw on that far sideline. Oh, that's right. This isn't uh, the game that we saw the other night. I forgot about that. The other night we had the ball go out for it should have been a Bedford corner in the last uh, regular season girls game. It was to the right of the flag by at least two yards. And it, we're not awarded the corner. It was a throw in. I forgot about that. Big throw there by Balecki. Challenging inside. Now it get, gets all the way back to this back line. Santer touches it forward. Johnson gets fouled. Foul. Yes. Yep. Legs get tangled. Not quite sure why our hands are in the air. That was quite clearly a foul. And now Benjamin will step up. I like the way both of the officials, they looked at each other. You could tell that they were looking at each other, and they both signaled the direction on that. Because sometimes one from a different angle might think it's the other way, and they don't want to put their arms up different directions, like yeah. safe and out in baseball. True. <laughs> Kaplo and Balecki stand over this one, the righty and the lefty, both with good range here. Three-man wall, 10 yards away. These are dangerous situations to direct free kicks, even though this is far away. A little surprised the Astros are not keeping the 18. Balecki runs over it, now gets the ball oh, out to that this. left side. Balecki fires oh. high and over the cage, but I like that little play there. 
have not seen that this entire season by any team. That, and that was well done. That's like a short corner, Corey. You're playing these little trick plays, little different, switch yeah. things up, you know. Yeah. And that almost, that different. almost worked. Oh, it's not <laughs> different. Come on. This is in the field of play. Come a lot on. more room to work, man. You're not isolated from one side. Hey. I, I like that a heck of a lot better than the short <laughs> corner, as you know. Oh, yeah. Not a huge fan of those. Johnson now near side. Davis Wallace gets free back to Johnson. They do this so well. This is, this is a nice play. Pinkerton is doing a great job of defending us, though. They've worked well together for many years. Johnson and Wallace, both seniors. Put the pressure on the defender and force the throw in. Nice job. Hoey plays it towards that midfield. Jacobson on to it now. Great marking by Hoey being right behind the player and ready for that second touch and almost like he knows which foot he's going to use, where the ball's going to go. Well played. Mr. Hoey, shout out to you. Tenant loops one deep to that left wing. Misplayed at first by the Pinkerton defender, but he recovered. And now Marshall plays it forward. Almost got the breakaway between two defenders. Oh. He ruled that incidental contact. That's a little Play surprising. On. Yeah. And we hear it from the Pinkerton Astros faithful. Yeah, I'm sure our viewers can hear that sound with the outdoor uh, microphone on. A lot of displeasure in that, and I can't necessarily disagree that it probably should have been called, just like that should be called, and that wasn't called either. Oh, that <laughs> from our standpoint, it clearly went off Marshall. <laughs> as, uh, well, there's also a push charge and almost a... Almost looked like a punch for crying out loud. Perfetto played it, and here's another huge throw by Fonseca. And as we talked about a few minutes ago, they're really letting them play here and, and prefer that, right? It's a physical game. Shoulder to shoulder should be allowed here. It just depends on how much and how much intensity those shoulder to shoulder occurs. It's interesting uh, experience-wise and whatnot level of playing uh, officiating. Both of these officials, I believe, are college officials as well. So they've got some pretty good experience. And uh, I'm very happy to see a couple of the top officials here today working the Bedford game. But I want some better calls. <laughs> Santer challenges in the midfield, and now Jacobson volleys it forward. Big boot by Wheeler looking for that right wing. And now Bellows. You know, when the ball's up in that area, the players with the air balls are going to have a hard time with the sun. That's what happened in that last one there. Oliveira plays it forward. They Great job by the keeper. That was going to be offside, but Walensky, as you mentioned, comes off his line and foils that one. The official was in position to make that call, and based on the time of the kick, we'd have to see it, and I can't. The sun's so strong in our eyes, we can't see our TV screens for the replays really very well at all, unfortunately. But uh, he may have been on sides. I'm not going to question that. I honestly think he was on. I think Hoey was a little confused, and even his center back, Kaplow, was farther back. Very quick very restart. Quick. Look at this. Holy cow. Very quick. Too, too quick for the Bedford side. They weren't, they weren't quite ready, like last time. That's two in a row. Kaplow heads it out to the left. Tennant plays forward to Jacobson nicely. Has one come hot back to him. Johnson runs on to it. Halfway through this first half, 0-0, zero, zero, still your score, state quarterfinal. Whoa. I don't think the officials, either of them were watching behind the play. The trail officials should have seen that. That was, a, I believe, a very clear foul by Pinkerton. Whether it was intentional or not, it certainly looked like a foul. Did you see that, Corey? I did. Feet got tangled there. Benjamin wasn't too happy about it. But again, intentional or not, Benjamin hit the deck. Probably could have been called a foul. Here he tries to sneak around the corner. And Fonseca is there to tip it out of bounds. We've got a substitution now. Historically, for, oops, sorry. Go ahead. For the Astros, coming on is Denver Sherwood. Heading off will be Andrew Perfetto. Historically, I was just going to mention that uh, Pinkerton has a bit of a history of playing physically. 
and I'm not saying overly physically. Physically just means that they uh, will challenge hard at times. They're aggressive. And, and that, you know, great. That's a style of, of game. play. Part of the game. Yep, absolutely. You like to see that. Sometimes the officials actually, are, they're aware of that before the game, realize what's going to happen. And uh, if the other team steps up to that same style of play, it makes it easy to, for the two officials to work together and draw that line, what's a foul, what isn't a foul. And that's, that's a probing that occurs in every single game, hard hit foul. here by Benjamin. Yeah, that could, be, that could be a card as well there. I think that was serious enough. The way the play's been going, gets a stern talking to it. Don't see the official reaching for a card quite yet, but they do stop the clock. As the Pinkerton player, we didn't catch a number there, is down on the ground. And this is a situation where if I were uh, Coach Pepper, I might take that player out. Uh, he has an opportunity to do this because the injured player will have to come off the field. And uh, I might take that player out and, and talk to him, settle him down, because you don't, also don't want the opposing players then to go after him of retaliation. That's, that's fair. That's your senior captain, though, Ethan Benjamin. I think he probably has a good enough head on his shoulders to stay in. Coach Pepper might chirp him from the sideline and say, hey, you know, let's, let's be careful about how we challenge. But again, as I was saying before this occurred, this is, this is how every competition goes. The players need to explore what the officials will allow and what they will not allow, all within the realm of fair sportsmanship. We get the number now. It's Ryan Oliveira that took a pretty tough hit from Ethan Benjamin. 18 on 18 foul. So the Astros will have the free kick to restart things. But Benjamin, as he has been, a senior leader and pillar of this team should have the wherewithal to recover from that, make sure that he's protecting himself yet still challenging the ball in each 50-50 chance that he gets. Absolutely. Yeah, what, what I'm referring to, Corey, is more the opportunity for the coach as a, you know, this being scholastic, extension of the classroom kind of a concept to just take him out just until he put him right back in but just take him out give him a minute settle him down and uh, show show the coach and the officials that you're uh, you recognize the fact that it was over the line at least that's my opinion fair enough I say keep him in <laughs> college college I'd leave him in okay. high school what a pull Fair enough. Temp just, just sh very short time. Well, we volleys away this challenge. Running it on was Rodriguez, who has checked in. Vinny Rodriguez getting some action now. I believe he's on for. Well, let's see who he is on for. Thought it was Balecki, but I see Balecki there on the far side with the ball. Now we get a foul called on the Bulldogs. And I think the, the official on the far side turned his dial on his uh, decision making on what is a foul and what isn't down a little notch there and call that. And that's a good thing to do. Nothing wrong with that at all. Going with the flow of the game. Exactly. Long ball served in from that defender there. Nice turn, no shot. But he clears it out. And now having a go deep. But missing wide is Thomas Packin. Walensky would have had it if it was inside the post. That was a great dive. He, uh, I'm sure we're going to see it on, you'll see it on replay. Um, that was fantastic by Walensky to, to the timing of that dive. And those start, are hard to practice. They're, they're brutal on your hips. They start quickly enough, so we will not see the replay. And Benjamin plays it forward. Here's Mirza on the counter. Rodriguez tips it down. Oh. Just a little too far forward, and Wheeler clears it. Now Johnson. Balecki plays a lefty diagonal ball. That might be trouble, but Ladd fields it no problem. Just a bit too deep into the box, so Ladd is able to field that with two hands cleanly. 
didn't love that type of kick, but on the other hand, it's getting it into the box, and uh, we do have some players that are tall enough to challenge the keeper. Santer brings it down, tries to find Balecki on a run, but that gets intercepted. And now Johnson, near side for Hoey. He serves it forward. Benjamin trying to get on to it. Nice. Tough play there. Mirza gets to his left foot, takes a shot, blocked. Wheeler. Corner and coming. now the Bulldogs earn a corner, and the Astros don't agree with that one. I, I think they were right. It seemed like it went back off Balecki. Really? I did not. I didn't see that. All, I think the three closest Astros players all put their hands on their heads right here. They found that tip, and they were not pleased, as you saw in that replay. Short corner, Johnson. He'll serve it. Oh, much too far from goal area. Too far wide and too far off the end line. And now the Astros look to counter strike Hoey. Nice job by Hoey. Serves his defense well by kicking it out of bounds and lets folks recover. Nice play. Love to see the quality of both teams play out here is just, it's outstanding. Excellent boys high school soccer. Playing forward here is Aiden Brault. Balecki. Intercepted on that back line by Wheeler. Here's Marshall. Marshall tries to play it through and Caplo ranges over. Pinkerton fans were excited about that. One of the few times that the Pinkertons almost created an attack. Another opportunity here. Benjamin heads it wayward, and Paquin will play it forward. Too far, though, and Walensky comes off his line. Getting that ball right in, anxious to get the ball down the other end of the field. The way it's been, Walensky has only been tested that one time by a, a hard shot that was on goal, or almost on goal, excuse me. Balecki with the throw, 13 minutes left here in the first half. 0-0 zero, zero is your score. State quarterfinal between the Bedford Bulldogs and the Pinkerton Academy Astros. Bulldogs here in black. Visiting Astros in white. Mirza tries to play it down to himself. Nicely played away. Beautiful play there. Aiden Brault, and now we get a foul. Johnson will pick that one up as Bellows was flattened. One of the advantages of the three-man system, Corey, is when you have the referee in the middle of the field, he's able to talk to these players where the, the two referees in this in the dual system are too far away to speak with the players and try to deal with some things and calm them down with uh, preventing some things happening. Great defending there by Tennant. Got high and headed it down for teammate Colin Johnson. Santer plays it forward. Mirza is off, is He's off. off. Yep. just by. Maybe a step, maybe a step. Look beautiful though, Johnson tipping it ahead. No first down? No first down. No first down, six inches, six inches short. Here's a look to be sprung there, but just a step offside. So Brault will play it forward. Benjamin brings it down. Hoey turns back to Kaplow. Kaplow far side for Tennant. We've got Bill Jennings up on top of the booth here with the camera coverage. Andrew Fenn back at the studio running all the electrical things, moving the, the wires all over the place, turning the dials, flipping switches. I think he's doing replay for us, too. We're going to get an Astros foul on Johnson as the two players got tangled up. Let's see if he's doing replay. You got the replay on this, Andrew? I don't think so. <laughs> no replay for that one. No replay for you. No replay. Caplo will serve a long ball forward. Pinkerton's been in the tournament nine times. Bedford five times. If you look at the... Results of that, though, um, championships, Pinkerton had six out of nine, three runner-ups. 
Bedford, five appearances, two runner-ups, three championships. So a little better once they get there. And of course, like you said before, Bedford hasn't been around as long as Pinkerton. Bedford's got the edge on tournament success. Crafty footwork here by both squads. A great pass Latest down the here line. by Bellows. Looking oh. forward for Sherwood and Hoey clears it out. Nice clear by Hoey. Excellent marking of the player as he moved down reading the play where the ball was passed. And nice job. I'm sure Mr. Hoey is one of the many players out there that would like to see uh, Gabe out near him on the field. Gabe Teixeira. Big throw again here by Fonseca challenging in the penalty area. Caplow clears it out. Nice play. We'll chase that down on the far side. Great job to keep possession, and now Johnson will take some space up that far sideline. And we call that a nice transition when you're moving from defense, moving the ball up to offense, and Bedford does that very consistently in a very excellent manner. Excellent job out there. Corey, you did an excellent job last night and an excellent win by the Bedford Bulldog football team to end the season, regular season. Regular season finale was down at Keene. Harry Kozlowski and I brought the action on 105-1 WBNH. 28-0 victory for the Bulldogs. They capped off an undefeated regular season. They How many shutouts bye. did they have? Uh, you know good question. Off the top of my head, I think that might have been only second or third. Oh, really? I thought it was there were some 35 O's in the beginning or... 35-7, something like that. I know they they scored 35 points like in the first at least four games in a row, didn't they? It was. Yeah, it was crazy. Very easy to figure out what their <laughs> average was. 28 last night, an odd one for them in that starting quarterback Jack May was out, so they started Bennett Matthews at quarterback who had not played quarterback all season. I did not know that. I thought he would have been in a little bit. Foul. Foul Whistle. here from behind as Jacobson took one. And I like the hustle. You see the referee getting there. That's that what I was talking about, the referee getting there to talk to the players. Tries to defuse any potential fallout from that foul as Andrew Perfetto will be called for that, the senior forward. We actually have seen very, very few cards this season. Am I right? Am I, I, I mean, we haven't done that many games. How, but uh, hopefully next year the budget that we've got going for BCTV. Town-wise, Bill Jennings wrapped that up kind of this morning, and it's up to the town voters. And Well, I shouldn't say that. We still have some time for the town council to make some decisions, but we'd love to see some more coverage. And it does cost a few bucks to do that, but the last night we know we had family of players all over the world, literally, watching the game, which they wouldn't have been able to see otherwise. The Astros putting it together a little bit of a bid here, and it's foiled by the Bulldogs' defense. Santer comes out of the mix. And like you said, here's transition. Johnson, his pass gets tipped. Running onto it far side. I believe that's Balecki. Tries to get to his left. Oh, oh, yes. Nicely played by that defense. Thought that could have been a foul. Looked from here like it was just outside the box, so not the reason it wasn't called, but sometimes it is. It's in the box. It takes a little more to get the foul call. Well, the Bulldogs, nice touch here. Perfect touch. Mirza runs onto it. Ladd off his line, makes the save. Forward again oh. for Mirza, and he stumbles. Santer trying to get him. I think he was offside. No, no, no. no. He wasn't. I, okay, I they were pointing he, to oh. a goal kick. All right. There was a, uh, it was a defender all the way back near the goalpost. Right, uh, left goalpost, excuse me, from here, our left. Keeper's right. The other, the other right. Ticking down to six minutes. 0-0, zero, zero, still your score here in the first half. Which is surprising. I would have, I definitely would have thought at least one goal by Bedford in the first possibly 20 minutes. Honestly, they've only had one really good opportunity. Mirza are very early on. Had the ball in possession around the six yard line. A little box there out in front of the goalkeeper. Got a good shot off, but Ladd was there. Two handed save, deflected it over the crossbar. And really, that's been the best chance for either squad here today. As 
They've had great challenges in the midfield. Solid game both ways. Nice job by Pinkerton there to break that play up. Good physical play, and now Hoey will serve it forward, but... It's got a lot of backspin on it. This could yeah. be interesting. Mirza tries to oh, run onto lucky. it. Great play there by Aiden Brault as he heads it back to goalkeeper Ralston Ladd. Legal to do it by the head, not the foot. Back to, the, back to your own keeper. Nice play. Cleanly done. Perfetto with the head. Now Balecki serves inside Johnson. Back to Balecki. Disrupted there by Aiden Brault. You know, yesterday was a, a, a day before, a couple days ago as well. We've had some huge upsets at the end of the season with only one of the top four girls teams making it through the quarterfinals. And that was the four seed even. Yeah. I think all top yeah. three are gone. Yep. As of last night. Correct. When it when kind of was fourth, and they were victorious. The others lost. Two of those games went to penalty kicks. Bedford, one of them. BG, the other one. And uh, the odd thing, um, you know, that this is after a season where for the first time in a while there was no regular season overtime. And so now we've got not only overtime in postseason, two tens to begin with, and then two fifteens sudden victory periods. And after that, what we went through uh, here last night, you know, goes to penalty kicks, which no one wants to see. Deep ball there played out to the left by Hoey. And now Fonseca will have this big throw, will challenge that penalty area. Good crowd here today, both high schools, student section, decently populated. Throw into the middle, headed out to that left side by Benjamin. Balecki plays it forward. Wind starting to pick up a little bit, at least down to our left with those corner flag sticks getting a little more active. Foul here by the Astros. Benjamin's been taking a couple shots there in the midfield. And Corey, now, I, I'd say point, this. A pointless <laughs> three yards of, hey, back it up. That was a little silly. Ticky tacky, it's a little silly. Just but, get the hey. play going. Unless he had, what we don't know from here is he may have said to the player, hey, hey, before he did that, oh, this is dangerous. Opportunity Very here, dangerous. stepping up, Hoey. Hoey. Deflects it away from pressure, now chipped back to the left-hand side. Tough touch there. Caplo, solid as ever. Gets that Bedford defense out of trouble for now. Oh, nice run. And now they serve it forward for Johnson. He's got a lot of space in front of him, and he'll take it. Cuts through to the middle. Offside. Mirza Offside. is off. It gets blown yeah. dead. And the Pinkerton players, the defenders, get credit for that. Uh, they stepped up very, very nicely. They held back. They could see sometimes one of the defenders or multiple defenders are actually uh, orchestrating that by yelling. Step. Yes, yeah, now. Step, step, hold. They held their line quite well. Mirza, again, probably two steps off that time. Wasn't really all that close. Now served forward. Back and forth affair here in the first half. We're inside two minutes. Clock stops on the scoreboard. They keep the remainder of the time on the field. 0-0, zero, zero, still your score in the state quarterfinal. Tennant volleys it. That's High a foul. Field, no he got, call. got up over his shoulders from behind. That's That should have been called, in my opinion. Santerre. Nice ball on sides. Wallace, near side. Mirza takes a shot, Lad. Save. Lad, true to the test. This is at least his third save, and two good opportunities by Mirza. One by Johnson. That was incredible. And that was a marvelous save. Wayward touch by Benjamin. He's able to run back to it. Wallace now. Back to Benjamin. Nice Has a head run. of steam. Serves it in the middle. Ooh, that looked like it hit a hand there. Attempt there, I believe that was Santer. No, excuse me, Johnson. No, it was Santer. And Ladd comes up with it. Boots it away. Ralston Ladd, senior. He's come up with a few good saves here in this first half. Wallace. 
looking to go one-on-one -on -one and challenge. True to the test was Jamison Caffell. Oh, look at that heel pass. Dangerous, or actually it's dangerous. Not a high percentage probability of it working, but it did for him that time. Nice play. Belecki runs on to it. Brings it down and now looks to move forward. Nice little touch there, but can't connect with Santer. Bedford's had a lot more opportunities, but cannot finish. Bellows plays it wide. Here's Welch Not down yet. that far side. Oh, great step up on that through there. Benjamin is on to it. Half. We hear two whistles. That's halftime here at Bedford High School. 0-0 zero, zero is your score. A well-played first half by both teams. Certainly more opportunities for the Bulldogs, but they are not able to capitalize. Can't finish in that final third. And we go to halftime tied at zero. We'll take a break here at halftime and join you for second half action in the state quarterfinals boys soccer action. We'll see you on the other side. Welcome back to high school, Bedford High School in Bedford, New Hampshire. We do have the state quarterfinal going on in the state tournament for boys soccer action. The Bulldogs are tied with the Pinkerton Astros 0-0 at halftime. I'm Corey Munster Tiger joined in the booth by Bill Klein momentarily. 40 minutes back on the board. We're ready to get started here for the second half. Very well played first half. Physical match, few opportunities for the Bulldogs. They were not able to capitalize. None of significance for the Astros. And we are back and ready to play. Away we go. Love to see us avoid overtime, let alone the PKs. And I don't have anything to rush home for, by the way. No plans this evening? Not taking Oh yeah, I have plans, Corey. Oh, okay. I, right. I, have, I have huge plans. Um, somebody just mentioned when I walked out of the booth, the half there, whoops, I'm gonna, I walked out of the booth and I didn't even realize that I had taken my jacket off and the jersey that I'm wearing, Penn State where I went for grad school and uh, part of my grad assistantship was working with the soccer team back in 1975. 74, 75, 76. And uh, Penn State does have a football game today. They happen to be playing against Ohio State, and they're ranked above them this time. I've heard of them. Huge game. Wanted to see it live. It started at 12 o'clock. Stoppage is a player down. I didn't see anything happen, and the referee is calling quickly for the trainer to get out in the field. Thomas Paquin down for the Astros. He's holding his head, so perhaps... Ran into a player or caught a wayward elbow. I didn't see what happened either, but they do blow it dead. Yeah, it was done pretty quickly. The referee moved from, you know, out by the touch line in. So he saw something happen, but obviously didn't blow the whistle for a foul. So with some incidental contact, maybe the, the Pinkerton player ran into one of the Bedford players. But a lot of times when you see that, you see one of the opponents, the player that collided with them, uh, get near him during this moment in time. Maybe, maybe, it was the, maybe, maybe it was the keeper. It may have been the keeper that ran into him. Could be. Could have been his own player, right? Yeah. And yeah. actually, it looks like Andrew Perfetto is standing over him there pretty closely, so perhaps that was the player who had the contact. But either way, taking a moment here for Thomas Paquin to get his senses about him. The referee's conferring way over, or not conferring, just relaxing over here, totally away from the play. Looks like it's not not anything we want to see. A little more serious than just a bump on the head. Paquin is sitting up right now, so that's a good sign. Benjamin wandering over. Not sure if that's him being a leader and a captain in doing that, or if he was actually the one that made incidental contact. But again, no foul called. So the official didn't feel there was... Oh, good. Pl players up. Now, Corey, you may be aware, and I see the official talking with uh, Kerry Bowles, the Pinkerton coach. Um, just like is in other sports, there's a uh, concussion protocol here. That if, in fact, that it, uh, it's believed that he may potentially have a concussion, he cannot play until he's cleared by a physician. 
the trainer is not considered a qualified individual to make that decision. So this could be interesting. So we'll keep our eye on that situation again. Thomas Paquin seemed to have taken a hit to the head and is walking off under his own power. So that's a good sign being escorted off to that far sideline. The Astros will restart things down here to our left as it looks like Ralston Ladd, the goalkeeper for the Astros, will get things started. They brought a uh, substitute, came in. I'm sure they did. I two, four, six, have to see eight, what number that is. Nine. I don't think he's in yet. Maybe, no, I don't know. Well, they wave him on now as he there trots in from the far sideline. Yeah. That's Phoenix Bolio that will trot on for the Astros and come across close to midfield. Coach Balls graduated from Pinkerton High School. He was an all-star soccer player there, 1985. And back to coach, and he's been coaching for quite a while. Ball gets dropped for Ladd. He brings it back into the box. Now throws it far sideline. <coughs> Astros will probe that left wing. Right down the sideline. Can't make the connection. Hear a whistle that might have gone over the touch line there. Seems like the Bulldogs will have a throw in. Benjamin, nice turn. This pass gets interrupted. Back onto the ball, touches it for Santer. Volleyed out by the Astros. Over the years, there's been a few times that there's been some uh, potential rule changes with respect to headgear for soccer. Touched into the middle, but cleared out by the Astros. Aiden Brault. The only change that actually is in place is that in youth soccer, you, the little ones, cannot uh, use their head. There's no heading allowed until you get about, I think it's eight years of age. It's not just the ball hitting your head, it's when two ball players are going up to attempt to head the ball that makes it extra dangerous. To me, that's the, the more serious issue. Yep. Wallace here serves it in. Can't quite make the connection. Looking for Mears and now Benjamin on to it. Yeah, those 50-50 balls, the little bobbleheads are smashing into each other at eight years old that they have tough time controlling their bodies so it makes a lot of sense why they would try to limit that kind of contact until the players are a little bit older throw yeah. here by the astros forward or really older back uh, close to 20 years ago when i was still playing i was a uh, the uh, over the hill league some of the people listening to this broadcast might be aware of that, or some of them will be in the future if they're not yet. Uh, <laughs> biggest adult league in the world. Uh, Europeans don't necessarily do it like that. Organized league, they have something like six or eight divisions all over New England. And um, I used to ride with a player, uh, Masood Sami. Um, a professor at, a uh, well-known professor at Southern New Hampshire uh, University. And I drove him twice over a couple of years from a field someplace to a hospital to get sutures on his head. Oof. He was one of our key defenders, and uh, he was not shy. He would, he would go after <laughs> Paul, and his, I'd drop him off back at home, and his, his wife would look at me just shaking her head. Volley there by the Astros, well over the cage. It did go through the uprights, and many of the fans signaled that it was good. They wanted some points put up on the board? No three points in this sport. <laughs> winner here will play against the winner of Hanover and Merrimack on Wednesday evening, 6-15. Fans that didn't like that one. We're at Manchester Memorial. I agree, there was some contact there and no call. The other half of the bracket will play that same day, Wednesday afternoon at 4 p.m. It will be the winner of Exeter Portsmouth, who t play today at 3, against the winner of Nashua North Keene, 
And that game is ongoing right now. We don't have any score updates for anybody, so apologies on that one. Johnson ranging quickly through midfield, tips it to his right to Mirza. Little toe touch out to Belecki. And they try to organize an attack. Mirza ranging to his left. Belecki couldn't make the connection and broken up nicely by the Astros defense. Here's Kaplow checking his shoulder. Touches it back to Walensky. Hoey into the middle for Benjamin. In both the Bedford and Pinkerton girls volleyball teams will be playing today. The Bedford game's home against Merrimack tonight at 6 o'clock, and that should be an outstanding match. Oh, unfortunate. Galecki with a heavy touch there will seed a goal kick. Girls volleyball will be going for a fifth consecutive state championship. That's amazing. Also amazing was the golf results from this year's state tournament. The Bedford boys won the championship. Did you hear the margin? Um, no. Two, two players battling here near no, side. I don't think I have. Bedford gets the benefit of the call. 19 strokes, Bill. 19 strokes in a state championship. It was an amazing shot. Oh! Balecki with a right-footed in bender. Swinger. Yeah. Bend it like Beckham. Beckham. And he couldn't quite find the net, but that was over Ladd. You could see Holy here on the replay. Cow. Look at the motion on that ball and just missed that far post. That would have been a nice goal to uh, make it a one nothing game, take some of the pressure off of uh, the Bedford side anyway. Pinkerton wouldn't be too happy, but oh. Underneath, foul called, good call. Lecky fouled by Perfetto. Earns the kick. Some saltiness the there. Give him the ball. A quick restart. Start again. Lecky forward to Johnson. He's double teamed. Avoids one, takes a shoulder. Bumped a couple times there, but not hard enough for a foul. Earns the throw. And Benjamin will play it all the way across the Hoey, switching fields. It's beautiful how they know how open some of the players. Hoey's been doing a great job today. This is one of his best games. Back Wallace. Up. Into the middle for Benjamin. Just great field vision by these players. Surveying, just trying to find the open teammate. Volley missed here. Welch came but forward. Touched. Couldn't get a good foot on it. Excuse me, that was Miles Shea. Potential foul there. That would call play on. Balecki cuts oh, back to his get left. Get it in the area. And Shea interrupts that one. Big right foot forward by Perfetto. And just turning that ball over. Kaplow runs onto it. I can see a winning goal by Bedford coming from a penalty kick, possibly the way that both sides are playing. Johnson nice touch. Runs onto it. Beautiful, beautiful decision to use his head. Balecki back to Johnson. Santer into the box, plays it over. Johnson, left foot. Glad. Oh! Makes the save. Glad made it, but he didn't have it under control. It's out in front of him. And uh, player on the right side there. Wallace, Wallace was able to get close to it. But Ladd, Wallace. He was there. If he didn't pull it right back in, it was a goal. Sure did. He gave up the rebound, but was able to quickly reel it in. And Ladd, another one that keeps Pinkerton in this game. The score again is even, 0-0. One of the few not perfect first touches there. Didn't realize where the Pinkerton player was as he attempted to play it forward to himself. Touch it wide, make it easy, take the pressure off. No. Nope. Benjamin will move forward himself, plays it far side, and then stepping up, Fonseca. Interesting, the beginning of the game, we, you mentioned, Corey, how much the ball was up in the air. And uh, the, it was Ooh. a foul. No call. Not surprising. Jacobson getting a 
heavy touch from behind. Especially Bedford has switched to the ground. Keep keeping the ball in the control on the ground. Nice play. He's going to get fouled. Whoop. Tempted foul. Missed. Johnson ranging forward into the box. Serves across. Oh. Left footed. Wallace can't get a good shot off. And now Benjamin will settle things down again. Momentum seems to be building for the Bulldogs. Most of the action has been off to our left side this half. Johnson plays it back for Tennant. It is fun to watch this game, and if, if you if you're watching this game, and you know younger players, boys and girls, should watch what this te team, especially the Bulldogs, are doing. But the way that Pinkerton, I'll say, is defending, is interesting as well to see the how they're very very well coached. Johnson will be called for the foul here. Pinkerton, quick restart. They don't have numbers and pressure too quick. Sometimes that quick restart works, but not always. Aiden Surrett played it wayward and out of bounds. Hoey here now, switching fields from Benjamin. Wallace back to Hoey. Avoids pressure and plays it forward. Mirza can't quite get to it. And now played forward to Perfetto for the, the Astros. Nice defense. Holds things up, waits for some of his teammates to move forward. There's Bellows. There we go. Now the Bulldogs back onto it. Balecki near side. Is that an interception? Interception on that play, Corey. <laughs> Wallace oh. heads it down, takes a shot, no call. Defending was Ethan Fonseca, that left back for the Astros. Now Fonseca again, played long diagonal, misses the mark. Tennant to Balecki, Balecki to Mirza. Mirza was, wants that, uh, that pass to himself there to set himself up for two-step shot. Benjamin makes a run, now Jacobson. It's the kind of move though that when you're Watch, looking at a team, if you're um, scouting them or anything else, and the coaching staff would be aware of that and tell the players, watch for as he leans his body like that, this is what's going to happen to the ball. He's trying to set himself up for that, collecting it right there. It's going to be near around him on the ground, and he's going to be off balance, not able to move quickly to it. And Pickering has picked that up very, very nicely. Kaplo sends another one to the inside scoop. And the Astros will have the throw on the far sideline. Inside scoop. Ice cream. Yeah, the ice cream ice place cream. over there. Yeah, I think that ball just about reached there. Very popular, as a matter of fact, just like Bedford soccer is, boys and girls. Any age, including the adults. Johnson has been everywhere during oh, this nice game passer. here. Santer gets taken out behind the play. No call. I believe play they played a play, play on. on. Yeah, yep. play on. Bulldogs with He's the on. advantage. He's Mirza on. now. In there, oh. shoulder to shoulder, no call. No. Nope. The Bulldogs will have a throw in, but a lot of chirping from the stands. Tough challenge there on the backside. Play I believe continues that was quickly. Wheeler on Mirza. As much as I like to see that on replay, we, the, the play just got going so quickly again. Benjamin Rangers forward into the box. Mirza tips it. Oh! One to nothing, Bedford, no oh, goal. I loved how quickly Benjamin got back forward, ranges in just a tip of a toe for Mirza. And the Bulldogs go ahead 1-0 with 26 minutes remaining in this game. Beautiful, 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 clean goal, which is what I love to see. I don't like the trashy goals. I, oh gosh, that was beautiful. They've been working so hard, Corey, you know, like I said before, to get the one goal after having so much control. And after the 5 nothing win, to be scoreless at the half was amazing. And, you know, a shout out to Pinkerton's defense. However, Bedford putting that together, and they've had so many great passing, but between the keeper, I mean, gosh, you know, Ladd has been incredible, but finally gets beat. 
And really, Ladd had no chance on that. Just a, a beautiful cross from Benjamin. And just that toe tip from Mirza finds the low left corner. Ladd really had no chance. And now the Astros' extra motivation here as their season is on the line. They fire one in on Walensky. That's a shot on goal. What the, is that the first? Very well could be. We need a statistician. Can we add that to the budget, Bill Jennings? Galecki earns the throw near side. Of course, now the pressure's on Pinkerton. They have to score to keep it going. Uh, Bedford not just, certainly not going to hang back defensively. As you can see, they haven't changed their setup at all. Yeah, and, sure. You uh, don't want to have them take their foot off the gas. And historically, they've used momentum and scored a number of times a lot of consecutive goals, quick ones. Was it the, I think we one of the last games we did together, hit two goals in about a minute? Yeah, to start the game even, I believe Mirza followed a Teixeira goal, and we'll get a foul here at midfield. Balecki, a little undercut on Jamison Caffell. Yeah, I thought that kind of could have gone both ways, and I was disappointed. I didn't see a clear signal by the officials to which way the call was going. I wasn't sure. Shea ranges forward, but that gets picked off by Balecki. And now Shea back onto it, tips it forward, and Benjamin steps through. On the close passing defense, Bedford wins that one. Senior captain Ethan Benjamin just so composed Very on the well ball. Done. Balecki tries to feint. Now it's intercepted by Benjamin again. Tennant plays it forward. Be so. interesting to see, Corey, if the attack from Bedford will get a little bit more uh, air time on it, uh, getting it simply down the field quickly. And I'm sorry, I kind of cut you off on that one. My apologies. All good. Anyone who's never broadcast, doesn't have any idea what it's like to be up here. You get so excited. There's things you want to say. And I have to defer to number one position and a, somebody who I have had the huge pleasure to be working with. On side, Tavis Wallace. Tipped away by the Astros defense. Well, thank you, Bill. I appreciate that. It's been a pleasure for me as well. The Bulldogs ahead 1-0 here in the state quarterfinal. Scoring just moments ago with 26 minutes left in this second half. Ali Mirza tipped in a cross from Ethan Benjamin. The Bulldogs hold this 1-0 lead. Honestly, both you and Lauren Fox, I feel like I'm working with true professionals. Like I'm an amateur and I'm working with professional broadcasters, sports announcers. Appreciate that compliment, sir. We've had a lot of fun broadcasting a number of different sports, football, soccer, basketball, lacrosse. Have you ever tried table tennis? <laughs> I, I can play some table tennis. I've never broadcasted a table tennis match, though. I, I believe your, your number one personal sport would be hoop, correct? Basketball? I, I might have to Maybe. say lacrosse, actually. Oh, I'm sorry. Hey. Yeah, I, I've... Uh, Played a good amount of lacrosse over the years. Did you ever know Tim Mays, our former superintendent of schools? I did not. Here's a steps through here. Tim Mays won. I was at UNH. He was uh, on UNH lacrosse team. There you go. With a, a very well-known player, Teddy Garber. I do know Ted Garber. Balecki runs onto it. Can't get a good strike. Ted Garber, of course, longtime UMass head coach. His father. He he followed his father. The, the funniest thing about Ted is he and I were at UNH literally together, and uh, he didn't know anything about soccer. Um, when the soccer coach, Don Heiliger, suddenly left to become the director of recreation for the city of Dover, and uh, actually had a great program there. I'll give him credit for, for that. But Teddy got the head coaching job for a little while, soccer, with no experience. And uh, people were shaking their heads. What, what, or they were hanging him on, keeping him happy until that opening 
occurred when his dad retired from UMass. That was the rest of the story. There you go. The timing of it, the years that they were all working together to do that is a, a nice thing and well-deserved, as you know. It's always nice to see when that comes together. And yes, he did quite well down there at Ma UMass. Game here at hand, though. The Bulldogs lead 1-0 about halfway through this second half. Goal by Ali Mirza, who we talked about early on in this game. Always seems to be in the right place at the right time and frequently finds the back of the net. Does it here again in this quarterfinal game. Tenant to Balecki. Earns nice. Time and space. Volleys it forward, but it does go out of bounds near midfield as he was trying to connect with Colin Johnson. And we're almost to the middle of the second half. Santer tips it forward. Mirza can't quite get there as Wheeler plays it forward for the Astros. Interesting, as we see the desperation from the Astros, we've seen a little bit more action down to our right as the Astros are putting a little bit more pressure on the Bulldogs' defense, who have remained true to the task. And we'll see subtle time-wasting tactics here for the Bulldogs. As we saw it there for Johnson. He was about to take the throw in and just left it for Balecki. And if you didn't say that, I was going to. That's exactly what it looked like. And that's a smart play to, a smart way to, to slow it down because they did it in a sportsmanlike manner. It's, it's a very normal thing to do to uh, drop the ball and have another player take the throw and you move downfield quickly. Nothing wrong with that. Not unsportsmanlike. Part of the game. Kaplow ranging forward there, trying to connect with Ali Mirza, but couldn't quite find his feet. And now ranging backwards, gets ahead on this long ball. Plays it forward, and Benjamin plays to Balecki. This long could be interesting. Oh, put the pressure on. And, Corey, that's part of why I said about the long balls, that uh, the first touches from bed from excuse me, Pinkerton defensively, have not been quite as good as they could be. Therefore, you're going to get some throw-ins like that. Throw in here for Balecki. Aiden Brault volleys it forward. Interesting. That was strange. <laughs> <laughs> so, the, so that ball. The fans don't understand, unfortunately. Yeah. It broke the plane of the sideline, which the <laughs> official can quite clearly see. It goes out of bounds. Even though it landed inbounds, the ball was out yes. of bounds. Yep. So yep. the official, again, standing right here on the sideline, can very clearly and easily make that call. The fans in the stands don't have the perspective, or perhaps they don't know the rule. Either way, Bedford throw in. And that's just like offsides. If the referee's in position, he and a couple players know whether or not that call's right. In that one, uh, it was the same thing. There were a couple players and the referee. The, 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 <laughs> the spectators, I'm surprised that they uh, responded like that. Uh, but they're excited. They want this team to go ahead. Well, sure. Honestly, it, it, to they, me, it seems like they were naive of the, the rule, right? It bounced in I, bounds, but it was But I'm surprised out of it, so. that people from Pinkerton, I'm giving them full credit here, Corey. I'm, I'm surprised. Oh, look at this. Shank to clear will lead to a corner, and Colin Johnson will range down wow. to our left near side for a Bedford corner. They'll probably not rush this again, get set up. Saw a lot of jostling uh, in the first half on a couple of the corners. A lot of mixing up where there could have been easily a call to bring the ball back out more than usually see more calls against the attackers this moment. Oh, look at that. Johnson settles right it. Right footed in swinger. Kaplo runs onto it near that far end line. Cleared out in a way it tips off of a Bedford player, and it will be a goal kick for the Astros. 17 minutes left here in this game. 1 0. Bedford leads in this state quarterfinal. The sun has, like you predicted, has disappeared from the sky. It has, whatever it's actually set or just behind a heavy cloud cover now, which is much better for us from up here without the sun in our eyes. We could take the sunglasses off and we can see the monitor as well. Nice little feature that we have here is the replays. Thank you very much to Andrew Fenn back in the studio helping to coordinate those. 
Again, Bill Jennings up top here of the press box. He's out braving the elements, although the elements aren't too fierce today. We appreciate him on the camera. No, he was probably pretty happy when the sun was out up there. <laughs> True. He did go to get an extra layer, probably a wise decision early on. Wallace. Nice move there. Look at that. Ooh. That's going out. Bedford throw. Bellows volleys it near side, and Tennant will take the throw in for the Bulldogs. They'll play it all the way back. Caplo will settle. Odd play through the middle. Nice play there. Picked off by Bellows, makes a move and distributes it out to the left-hand side. Here's Fonseca playing it forward. Caplo gets all the way back. Touches it out of bounds. We'll get a substitution here. Phoenix Bolio will head off for the Astros. I'd say the players of both sides here, regardless of the result of this game, are going to be a little sore when they leave this field tonight. Coming or on. Pitch. Excuse me. This is a pitch. Pitch. Yeah. Pitch. This is a pitch. Pitch. Riley McNair just onto the field. Almost gets a shot off there at the top of oh. the box. And Mirza, nice move to get some nice space out pass for himself. there, too. Look at this nice square pass. Santer ranges forward. Unfortunately, Bedford wasn't wide enough to make another didn't have a player out there in the right wing to uh, keep that play going. It would have moved, probably would have moved all the way down the field immediately. Very, very great transition. Started by Ali Mirza on defense. Big throw here by the Astros. Out of bounds on that far side. I believe the Bulldogs will have the throw. Signaling Pinkerton? No. Yep, it's been changed, I believe. Are the officials together on this? Yes. Deep in that corner, though, the Bulldogs will have to work their way out. Big throw by Hoey. Headed forward. Ooh. What was that? that? I think that was out of bounds there again, so we'll have another throw for the Bulldogs. <laughs> Hoey steps up. Volleyed forward. Back spin on this, I think, again. Uh-oh. Kaplo heads it back to Walensky. You hear that uh-oh? You know, I saw that. The spin of the ball was dangerous. Perfetto was right there challenging Walensky. If he had bobbled, it would have been trouble for the Bulldogs, but Walensky shorthanded. Yeah, if Walensky had, uh, had hesitated at all, it would have given the Pinkerton player an opportunity to... Touch the ball, at least, and possibly put it in the back of the net. Logan Tennant with the throw for the Bulldogs. Tough challenge there by the Astros, no call. Yeah, I think that should have been at least a play on. I thought it was a foul. Benjamin mixing it up with Bellows. It goes out of bounds for an Astros throw. A lot of complaining down here by the the fans, both sides. But this has basically been the same tenor of the game right through. Strong challenges both sides. That ball goes out of bounds. Inside 13 minutes to go in this game, the Bulldogs lead 1-0 over the visiting Pinkerton Astros. State quarterfinal here. Again, the winner will play on Wednesday evening at 6.15 at Manchester Memorial. And they will face the winner of Hanover versus Merrimack. And Hanover has been a team that uh, Bedford has seen three of, the, three of the five final performances. Final. Shank here oh, nice move, Astros. nice, ooh! Hit the crossbar, ooh. up to the football crossbar. Wow. We have a goal kick. And you can see here on the replay, the ball just squirts across to Balecki. He gets onto it. Nice touch to his left foot. Just strikes it too high. It hits off the football goal post crossbar. And nice now Johnson play. here again. Great job. Challenging this Astros defense. They get it forward. Bellows touches it into the middle. Those little stutter steps by the Pinkerton player 
working good for them. A little too wide, I think, for him to get to the ball. Nope, he got there, but Marshall. Now it's out for Pinkerton throw. Plays it all the way over to Sherwood, and it goes off of Hoey, so the Astros have a throw. Another exciting opportunity for the Bulldogs. They are almost putting the ball under the crossbar. Blackie. Yeah, tough one there for Blackie. Last night we had a shot that hit underneath the crossbar and came back out, and a lot of people thought it was in the net, but with a round crossbar, the probability of it, if it hits the crossbar and comes back out at all, it didn't cross the line. It couldn't have, basically. You see it when it comes back down over the goal line at the bottom. I might refute that, though, because in certain cases, I've seen a wicked spin on a bar down goal where it hits the crossbar, goes down, hits inside the goal, and then bounces coming back out. But you just said it. Hits down, goes down, and hits inside the goal. So it's yes. way underneath the crossbar. Fair enough. Fair way enough. Way underneath. And the spin, like you said, makes a bigger difference. But not, against, not that much against a round goal post. If the old square ones... Yes, even greater. Fairly obvious, I know that's technical, right? but <laughs> keep in mind that, <laughs> what should I say? I was a scientific uh, sports major, uh, biomechanics, sports, <laughs> neuromuscular motor performance. What does that have to do with goalposts? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding, I'm kidding. No, that's, that's tough ooh, one here. Yeah. Walensky was measuring it there. Oh, nice. Played Simple, easy. Hayden Marshall. <clears throat> Walensky. Two-handed grab. Looked like he was trying to measure that up and wasn't quite clear if he was going to not going to pull be, that ooh, down. A little too soft to touch back pass there by Ali. Here's Perfetto deep in the right wing. Swing and a miss. Strike one. Played off. Benjamin plays it forward. Mirza has time and space. Mirza, I'm sorry. I said Ali. Mirza last time. A touch. Oop. Pushed from behind. Let it go. And slide tackled out near side by Hayden Marshall. Under 10. But that's also uh, under 10 minutes left for Pinkerton to have an opportunity to score a goal and tie it up. And Jacobson back to Tennant. Kaplow now surveys. Plays it deep to the right. Mirrors are Offsides. running onto it. And yes, it is offside. Yeah. A lot of belly aching down to our left with the I'd Bedford like to faithful, but I think that Andrew, was the right Andrew, can you call. show it to us? I think it was, too. The ball came from so far down the field, it, it looked odd, but I'm pretty sure he had it right. He knew when the ball was played, and it's based on that, the touch. Even is on, but I think Mirza was just a half a step ahead. I'm willing to bet that the Pinkerton player actually stepped up on it as well. Foul here by Bilecki. Wheeler will bring it back. Call satisfied uh, to a certain extent some of the Pinkerton supporters here this afternoon observing the game. Bellows will stand over this free kick. Ticking down to eight minutes to go here in the game. And if anybody is interested in watching field hockey this afternoon, we've got field hockey coming up. Two matches here back to back. Played in wide by the Astros. I believe that was Hayden Marshall. What division is being played this afternoon? All three. Uh, division one goes at three. Division three goes at five. Division two goes at seven. Three, five, and seven. Yeah, all, three, all championships. One, two, th oh, these are the championships too. Thank you, thank you. Great opportunity. You can see a lot of field hockey. I'm doing the PA for all three. A lot of field hockey coming up here from Bedford High School. Three championship games. We'll focus back here to the soccer game as the Bulldogs are looking to close this one out. Seven and a half to go in this state quarterfinal matchup. They lead 1-0 over the visiting Pinkerton Astros. Here's a jockeying for position on that far sideline. Wheeler bodies him out, played forward, and now Benjamin on it. I'll say that the NHIAA is probably uh, the reason why we've added this logo down on the field. Oh, he's Mirza. on, he's on. Lad comes forward. Corner. The goalkeeper, uh, the, excuse me, the referee initially looked like he was signaling for a goal kick. I don't know, I, I think he was pointing and talking to somebody, pointing that the ball went off of the Pinkerton player, but then immediately 
put his arm in the right direction to indicate the corner. Huge here. What do you think? Colin Johnson will play it right-footed outswinger. I think the Bulldogs are not going to be as aggressive as they normally are. Nice ball. Be Benjamin got onto got on it. it. The goalkeeper was out of the goal as well. It was deflected by it. an Astros defender, and no. now the Astros get Unlucky. a throw in as it tips off of Colin Johnson's foot. Here's that long throw again. Sure was. We have a foul, foul called here, I believe. Oh, he draws the foul. So the Astros with a free kick. Santer tries to slow things down, now retreats. Played forward. Nobody around to challenge Kaplow as he heads it forward. Bedford dropped back very quickly defensively for that throw, knowing that the player was able to make it almost like a direct free kick from where he was around midfield, close to midfield. Chipping forward is Wheeler. Kaplow there, tips it forward. Tennant will now clear. Although we haven't seen a lot of the defense from Bedford. Aiden like I mentioned in the beginning of the game, the balance of strong offense and defense for the Bedford Bulldogs side. Marshall now looking to make a connection. Good ball. Near side, Riley McNair. Tennant plays it away. And now Santer. Will come near side. A little stutter step and earn a throw in. We are at five minutes, and inside of that, time will be kept down on the field. I'm so excited watching the game, Corey. I was going to start my uh, timer and failed. Mirza here. Shields away. Balecki chips it forward. Wheeler plays it far side. Fonseca. Marshall. Lecky heads nice. it forward. Nice head. Benjamin shields nice. away. Nice. Nice. Keeping with it. Welch was challenging him, and now Hoey plays it forward to Johnson. Oh, Johnson, great move there. Chesting the ball down to himself. Mirza tries to connect with him, but that gets intercepted, disrupted, and then Mirza takes a hip check. Looked like an obstruction, but no call. Perfetto. Now played forward, looking for Bolio. Here's Shea, forward for Bolio. Tenant on him, one-on-one. -on -one. Kaplow plays it out. Composure, and that defense is going to pull up. Here's Marshall. Nicely served. Long ball in. Headed. Looked like Perfetto got one on it. Yeah. But not threatening the goal, and Walensky comes out, covers it up, and clears his defense out. Mirza will settle things down. Play great one on four. Great ball control by Mirza. Love the way he so so easily, so simple movements that he does. Maintain control of the ball close enough that he's got control of it. Tenant to Santer. Now Blackie tries to chip it ahead for himself. No call. Kaplow. Beautiful play by Kaplow getting away from Bolio. Jacobson will touch it far side for Johnson. I think you see some frustration from the Pinkerton players at this point that with the control that Bedford's still able to exercise. Oh, he ranges forward. Now Mirza. Oh, gosh. He gets Ref. smothered over there. Play on. No call. Play on. Give me a break. Johnson, taken away from behind, that's Bellows, and now played forward, Hoey. Heads it away, Wallace getting back in the defensive area. Tenant to Balecki. Ping pongs through the midfield. Played all the way near side as Shea tries to catch up with it and it goes out of bounds. Bedford uh, 
looks a little frustrated to I me. Mean, there's a sub coming in. Excellent job. Last game that we had here, they uh, stopped the clock, and it looked like the referee just did the same thing. I, I believe, yeah, the referee did stop his watch. I don't think that that's necessarily right, but... Oh, nice. Rodriguez played all the way back to Ladd. Here's Fonseca. Tipped out of bounds by Rodriguez. Not sure why they blew that dead. Perhaps the ball had come back on the field, but yeah. I think he was also, it looked like the throw was being set up for at least 10 years, yards down the field from where it should have been. You have to be Bedford getting close throw. to throw. What? Uh, last minute or two, and that call goes in favor of the Astros. Hoey shields it off and then takes a chip on the ankle there late. I think, I think a foul may have been called that by the perfect. trail official. The, the lead official was ready to signal potentially for a corner. But I think. Are we not too pleased about that as his ankle got clipped there as he was going over the end line. The official comes all the way down to warn Perfetto. What, what are we doing? Not quite we sure what the call is. tell what the call is. It's coming out. It's Bedford ball. It would be hard to believe but if that ball had gone see the way towards the, the Astros. Corey, look at the way the players did not know what to do for sure. so long a period of time. It wasn't clear. There was no signal as far as the direction, which is that's it's unfortunate. The call was made, though, which is at least he made the right call, which is huge. And I'm sure he stopped his clock. Kaplow stands over the free kick. You can see the wind blowing at his back, so he gets into it. Shanks it a bit, oh, and it goes out of bounds. Shame. Fonseca. Bedford needs the ball under their control again. Here we go. Santer brings it down and volleys and it forward, and that'll post. do it. Three whistles from the official. He points at midfield, and the Bulldogs come away with victory. 1-0 in this quarterfinal against Pinkerton. 1-0 is your final. They will go on to play Wednesday afternoon, excuse me, evening at 6.15. Again, they will take on the winner of Hanover versus Merrimack. That game is scheduled for this afternoon at three o'clock. The other side of the bracket, Exeter will play Portsmouth and Nashua North will play Keene. That will be on this afternoon as well. 12 o'clock for Nashville North and Keene, three o'clock for Exeter and Portsmouth. The winner of those two games will, will play against each other on Wednesday afternoon at 4 p.m. Bill, any last thoughts here as we wrap things up? That was a great game. It was amazing. And like, you know, like we've seen uh, on both sides, the girls and boys tournament at the end of the season here, some of these teams that were uh, not expected to win have come up and played extremely well. Pinkerton had a lot of chances. I'd say my player of the game for Pinkerton is clearly their, their goalkeeper. Ladd did an outstanding job to keep them in the game, especially in the first half, those saves. Other than that, I mean, you know, hey, we move on, the Bedford side, and it'll be interesting to see if they can repeat. But they have one more game before that, the semifinal, like you said, coming up. Derek Walensky gets the clean sheet. His defense did a marvelous job in front of him this afternoon. Lone goal was by Ali Mirza, assisted by Ethan Benjamin. Little toe tip in, finding the low left corner on a beautiful cross with 26 minutes to go here in the game. Actually, we're seeing that replay now. Benjamin across, Mirza gets a tough tip on it. That's the only goal here, and the Bulldogs win 1-0. For Andrew Fenn. Bill Jennings upstairs on the camera. I'm Corey Munster Tiger. Bill Jennings, uh, excuse me, Bill Klein. We appreciate you having spent the afternoon with us. Congratulations to the boys and good luck on Wednesday. We will be bringing you that action. I believe Harry Kozlowski will be in the booth with you on Wednesday afternoon for that semifinal. Appreciate the BCTV crew. Everybody have a great afternoon.